to out there. <laughs> uh, Brew, how dangerous are your Ravens? I mean, look, they, they've got the best. Hold on. No purple. You spent all your time with the most guys. The Cowboys no purple Jordans on. today. <laughs> no, no, I no. am shocked. It was a great win. I'm it was a great shocked. win, but okay. but no, I can't do it every okay, every week. They can't buy me new Jordans every, every week. <laughs> you can wear but the same the pair. Although, Just wear the purple. I'm open to it if you okay, do. Go ahead. Um, Sorry. They got the best running quarterback ever, and the best running back of the past decade. And so yes, off. Yes. And and I think Lamar is throwing the football better than ever. Like, he, I mean, he's averaging over 250 yards a game passing, which is the first time he's ever done that. And I, I just think his accuracy, I know I don't know if his percentage is the highest, but I think he's he looks better than ever in the pocket to that. me. Um, what I want to see is defense. And yesterday I was encouraged. And I know mm -hmm. Jaden Daniels had a great game. But they held what had been the highest scoring team in the league, to just 23 points. And on third down, and we, they didn't only have 52 yards rushing, but Brian Robinson wasn't there. But still, on third down, they held the commanders to 4 of 12 as far as converting. Commanders are second, even with what happened yesterday, they're second in the league in third down conversion. So to hold them to 4 of 12, I thought was impressive. And look, and I'm not trying to start at uh, – I thought the Ravens were the best team in football last year. Yeah. And I think they, they you can make an argument, obviously they lost to the Chiefs this year, but that they looking like that now, they just got to, they can't, like to me this whole year is about remembering your identity and solidifying that, mm -hmm. which they're, they're doing, improving defensively, cutting down the turnover, the silly self-inflicted wounds, a lot of penalties, they, they do that, and just keeping your cool. Because all of those things killed them against the Chiefs one in the AFC title game. Them. That's, that's what it's all about. One other thing killed them. The same thing that killed them all the previous years in the playoffs, which was their quarterback was terrible. He, he, right. And and so, like, and so this is, listen, I, look, I agree with you. Then the regular season last year, the Ravens were the best team. They are the best team in the league in the regular Now I know why so many Lamar Jackson fans <laughs> do not like Nick Ray. Let's listen to what he just said real fast again. <laughs> Else, which was their court. That's that's what it's all about. One other thing killed them. The same thing that killed them all the previous years in the playoffs, which was their quarterback was terrible. He, he, right. And so and like, and so this is better. listen. I look. I agree with you. Then the regular season last year, the Ravens were the best team. They're the best team in the league in the regular season in 2019 as well. The other year, Lamar won MVP. And I agree with you that I think Lamar, coach, might disagree, is playing at a higher level than he's played at any point in his career. I agree. 2019 was weird in that he had three. I looked it up today. He had three five-touchdown pass games where he completed 17 or fewer passes. So yeah, three times, three crazy. times where it was like it was one like in every three passes right. he threw. So that year he threw for 200 yards a game, right. but he threw at 36 touchdowns. It was mm -hmm. that was so I agree with all of that. But how dangerous are the Ravens? The answer is the most dangerous team imaginable until the games really matter. And I know, and I listen. I know well, I'm the bad argue, guy for this, but nobody cares. Well, that's been the this is, they prove this it. is what everyone thinks about Joel Embiid. This is what everybody used to think about James Harden when he was a star player. Nobody was a jerk for saying it, but because Bill Polian had a terrible take about Lamar seven years ago, now you you can't say what I think is clear to a lot of people, which is until he can be right now, he should be if there's if it's in a vacuum, if not, no history matters, he's the league MVP again. He well, is. He's like all those things are true, but if I'm if I'm thinking of teams that scare me, that who roots for the best team in the league, I would say the team we just talked about: Detroit, San Francisco, Cincinnati, Ugh. Buffalo. Take Cincinnati out if you don't okay. care. Buffalo, you're Houston. You're talking about teams that could have a chance in your teams mind that to beat teams the that if you're like, hey Nick, you can play the Chiefs in the playoffs can play Baltimore or those teams I just listed. I'd say give me Baltimore. Can, can we just? Put a little cold water on this. They, they weren't playing the 85 Bears yesterday. <laughs> oh, oh okay? coach like, is going further well, in that direction. Well, I'm just saying, 500 yards. I, no, I, I get it, but but not a lot of people pick Washington to be any good or go to the playoffs, except for you know some people. Coach. <laughs> but, but still, they have problems defensively, and I think I think Chris, you made a very important point. You said he's throwing the ball better than he's ever thrown in his career. Okay, that's the thinking right there that's going to get him beat in the playoffs. That's the thinking right there that's going to come back at some point to bite him because their identity 
is to run the ball first, and they've, they've added to that, that mix with, with what Derrick Henry brings to, to the table, right. and then build everything off of that. But when you start transitioning to, okay, we're going to be a throw first because Lamar is throwing the ball so well, that's when they historically have gotten into trouble and underachieved. But I know we've been fearing that, but that hasn't happened. They're still number one in rushing percentage. Yards per game, they're, gosh darn it, they're running for 205 yeah. yards per game. Yards per rush, their first is the best by any team in uh, Super Bowl era. Wow. And the reason, I know we didn't want to do a Chiefs versus Ravens thing. I, I fought against it, and then during the segment, I was like, you know what would be good if we did Yeah, just, <laughs> I, I know, this guy, is, uh, you know, new information. Uh -huh. <laughs> The first game, it was a fair take to say, you know what, Derrick Henry? A little bit too much tread on the tires. He had 13 carries for 46 yards. And since then, 84 yards, 151 yards, 199, 92, 132, two touchdowns the other day. So he's on pace for almost 2,000 yards. Yeah. This is very well, similar to we're going to do Caleb later. The trajectory of Caleb, it doesn't make any sense for an older running back to get better every game. But... Uh, either he's finding the holes or they're figuring out their how to line. utilize him better. Their but he gets better and better. Well, the, the Chiefs the got him at a improved. nice time, the, first time putting on the Ravens jersey and turning okay, him loose. Okay, maybe that's what happened. Or maybe one, or the, Lamar was great in that game. No, he wasn't. No. Like, I again, I can, I, I'll just wear it that people are going to view me judging Lamar Jackson the way we've ju v judged every athlete of my lifetime, which is if you are perpetually an A-plus in the regular season yeah. and then Without fail, every time you've been in the postseason, you've been a C minus or worse. And every time your team has failed to play to its seed and you've been at the center of it, we are going to look at you with a skeptical eye until that changes. We, we do it to Dak Prescott, nobody cares. We do it to every NBA star ever, nobody cares. But, but, but I do think, Nick, in fairness to him last year, they didn't call a lot of runs right. in that game. They did, when, when, yes, when they, they, let, they said the MVP go score 20 well, points, but, and he but, couldn't. But that's about understanding who you are and what you're really good at. And when you want to suddenly transition to something else and you're shocked that it doesn't work. Can I, I, oh, wait. we didn't want to do Ravens Chiefs. Oh, uh, you want to do, do Ravens Chiefs? No, no, we got to do Sirianni. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we're not doing Sirianni. We're doing the Ravens. <laughs> okay. This is, uh, this is going to be an interesting video. Because as a lot of you Ravens fans have seemed to be a love-hate relationship with me, it seems like depending on how many of my Ravens videos what you watched of mine, you either think that I'm, uh, you know, a great Ravens supporter, or you think I'm randomly uh, a Ravens hater and a Lamar hater, which could not be further from the truth. So hopefully we can get some clarity here, which is really interesting because seeing Nick react the way he's reacting you would have thought that I made certain videos reacting that way. And um, I have 1000% not. Um, and so it, it's worth repeating. Like, cause Nick is saying. Lamar Jackson has just played terrible in the playoffs. And that's why they fail. And I have emphasized in so many videos now. And this is what Mangini just kind of slightly hinted at. He just said very softly and un unfortunately not as passionate as nick just gave on his thing is that right i 1000 percent blame coaching that that kansas city chiefs game versus the ravens game in the playoffs i do not blame lamar right uh yes lamar did not play great that game but the blame i've said this a million times and i said this the moment that game ended and i made a video i said that game plan is indefensible I said it was indefensible, and I kept saying, and I know, and I took a lot of heat from Chiefs fans because Chiefs fans were like, "How dare you say that?" You know, the, the, they 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 it was the defense that stopped the Ravens, and I was like, "Yeah, the defense is great," and they and it contributed it, but this was like, what was the game plan? And I said they they did not put Lamar in a position to succeed. Now, was Lamar in a position where he could have overcome some of those issues? Absolutely. And when you are as elite and great as Lamar, you want your quarterback to be able to do that. But that is a hard thing to do. And I talk about this all the time that the coach's, you know, biggest job is to put their players in a position to succeed. Right. And when they can't, then you hope that that truly special player, the Lamars, the Mahomes, the Allens, the Burroughs, they can say, it's all right. I got this. And 
that was the situation where the Ravens did not put Lamar in a position to succeed at all throughout that game. Whereas you look at someone like the Chiefs, Pat, Andy Reid is putting Patrick Mahomes in a position to succeed drive after drive after drive. And then randomly, occasionally when he can't, Mahomes is like, I got you. And he can you know, he can have that moment. But what the Chiefs did, and this is what Nick was like saying, you know, why they no, they did. They said, Lamar, go be the MVP. Andy Reid has never just had a whole game plan where he goes, Mahomes, just go be you, buddy. That's that's not the way it works. I mean, that's it's it's an absurd claim. So I've I've just said this a million times. I one thousand percent blame coaching. Um, but on that same on that on that same logic, I do agree with Nick that whether you want to say Lamar or the Ravens, that no matter how great they play throughout this season. It is absolutely show me what you do in the playoffs. And we do say that about all these great players. It's what they do say about, and it doesn't even have to be Dak. It's just any players that have regular success throughout the season like Dak, right? Um, like, uh, you know, like kind of like Nick also said, Joel Embiid obviously switching sports. Like it is very much, right, when you're winning these MVPs, when you're having these awesome games, when you're even having blowouts, it's like, that is awesome, but what will you do in the playoffs? Will you win? And that type of, and I don't even want to call it criticism, I just think it's commentary, that type of commentary really makes sense. It really, really, really does. If you consistently come up short when people think you're great. And actually, the team that really has that more than anything is absolutely the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott, right? They keep winning 12 plus games in the, you know, in the regular season, all of that. And it's like, but then they spectacularly fail in the playoffs. And I won't say that the Ravens spectacularly fail, but they obviously don't play as good in the playoffs as they do. Um, previously and now you even had Nick admit seemingly I think so that he essentially thought that the Ravens were the better team and yet they still came up short but again the difference maker is preparation and Andy Reid I don't think the Ravens were ready for that game I don't think they were prepared for that game I remember watching it and just feeling like like they they don't look comfortable they don't look confident like this is you know they f seemingly have a bizarre game plan or they abandon their game plan right away like they were just leaving Lamar Jackson on an island and so that is what makes you nervous i'm not afraid that Lamar Jackson can't handle the playoffs i'm more like well can Harbaugh and that's and that's kind of what Mangini was saying is like look they're feeling how good you know uh, Lamar is throwing the ball so well and that's what's going to get them in trouble cuz i've also talked about that in previous videos that a lot of Lamar Jackson fans get really angry about when you say that they're at their best when they're running. And it, and and, it, and then if you turn Lamar and the, and the Ravens into a passing team, they're not at their best. And people then take that automatically as you're saying that Lamar can't throw. And that's what they even kind of talk about, that it was there was a terrible take seven years ago. And I actually talked about this and I had a live, I'm, I'm recording this at 3.30 in the morning right now, um, <clears throat> that... You know, all of the a lot of Lamar fans are set are, are just really kind of hypersensitive to that, you know, to that old take. And it's like no one's saying that, but this team is clearly at their best when they're able to run and pound the ball. I mean, you can see it. Uh, 205 yards per game is, is wild. 5.9 yards per rush is wild. You know, 10 rushing touchdowns is wild. And that is when they're at their best. That is their strength. So it's when if you turn this team into a pass heavy team, it's not to say, oh, we want you to do that because Lamar Jackson is trash and can't throw the ball and this, that. That's not what it's saying. It's just that that's not what makes them the best. That is not their strongest, most intimidating part of their game. So if there is a way for people for teams to take that away or encourage throwing more, then yes, you're theoretically not leaning on what makes you the best, what makes you special, right? It's not your strengths. It's like saying Steph Curry, if we take away his ability to shoot a three, you know, uh, we, we can beat them. And it's like, oh, you're saying that Steph can't dribble? You're saying that Steph can't knock down twos? He can't knock down mid-range jumpers? Of course Steph Curry can do that. He's the greatest shooter in the history of the world. He's just, a, it's just, if you can take away his three, then you take away his massive, massive strength. That is Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. And I think that is something that people kind of keep 
losing sight of. And obviously, Nick here obviously really kind of came in hard, but I think he comes in that hard because I, and again, you guys know that I uh, I call out Nick plenty, but as I've been exposed to a lot of Ravens fans uh, very angry recently, I can speak to it that there is this intense anger towards any slightly just not 100% positive remarks about Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. And like I even made a video earlier today with the herd and just said, kind of I went on a whole random like this is great. This is a nice win for the Ravens, um, but it's all about the playoffs. They got to, you know, they got to step up, you know, no matter what they do this season. It's all about the playoffs. They got to go all in. They got to figure something out. And a lot of people were like, you sound like a sore loser. This And I'm like, I, I praise the Ravens. I even said like, oh, the way the Ravens looked like I would say it was awesome. Lamar Jackson was playing pitch and catch out there. And someone took it as me saying like, they threw like, like I was saying that Lamar Jackson threw like short little passes and dump off passes or passes behind the line of scrimmage. Like, they took it as me saying that Lamar Jackson can't throw. And it's like, you're confused what pitch and catch means. Like you can throw an 80 yard pass and it's pitch and catch. Like it's just saying that the passing game was so easy. Like it is a compliment to Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. But there is like this intense, like immediate, like I just, you, you're hating Lamar, you're hating the Ravens. And again, when I see takes like Nick, I get it because on one side, what Nick is saying is fundamentally 100% wrong and way too much blame is going individually on Lamar Jackson. If you want to blame the Ravens, I, I'm more open to that as I've done so in the past, specifically Harbaugh and company. Um, but also I think this idea that right now the Ravens have had just so much success in the regular season, Lamar Jackson as well, that it really, really is what do you do in the playoffs? Because if Lamar Jackson wins another MVP and he continues to ball out, right? And they're putting up these historic numbers, but then they lose in the playoffs. They lose in the AFC championship game. Like, what are you supposed to do with that? Because this should be a better team than any of the other teams in the AFC. This should be better. This team is, should absolutely be better than the Kansas City Chiefs. They just should be. And then you're going to lose to C.J. Stroud and the Houston Texans? Sophomore, second year C.J. Stroud? Like, what? That can't be. Or you're going to lose to another... The Buffalo Bills? Who they got right now? You're going to lose to the Jets? The Steelers, right? Like, name any teams that it would be okay. If the Chiefs were a juggernaut, you could say, what are we supposed to do? It's Patrick Mahomes and, and Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey in his prime and Pacheco and Kareem Hunt. Like, what are we... Like, I would get it. But that, this, this, that the, the Chiefs are not a juggernaut, right? They can't do what the Detroit Lions did. They can't do what I've seen the Ravens do. So it's like, if you don't win this season, it's like, well, then what? Like, what? How? How could you not get out of the AFC? How can you not continue your dominance against the NFC in the Super Bowl? So like outside of just, you know, really unfortunate injuries, it's like, what? how could we say that the Ravens losing would be acceptable outside of them, obviously, you know, in the play, winning in the playoffs? And so that's what like the build off is, is like these regular season games are great. They're exciting. Obviously, enjoy them. Obviously, you know, learn and grow from them and all that. But in the back of your mind, if you're a Ravens fan, your thought has to be like, yeah, this is great. This is awesome. But like, you got to beat the Chiefs. You got to beat the Texans. You got to beat the Bills, the Steelers, you know, whatever teams are in the playoffs in the AFC. Like, and, and, and it's, it's, it's got to happen. Any loss is just not acceptable. Right, the, the 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 Cowboys kept winning big games, and they lost to the 49ers. And you could say, ah, the 49ers, right? They're going to Super Bowls. They've been a top team in the NFL. What are you going to do? And it was like you you could kind of explain that, although some of the losses were pretty you know embarrassing to a degree. But you could still explain it. And then to have them get walloped by the Packers at home, that's like, well, that can't be okay. The, so the Packers surpass you now. The Cowboys are supposed to be a top team in the NFL, at least in the NFC. And now you can't even win a home playoff game against the Packers with first-year starting quarterback Jordan Love? That can't be okay. I mean, no, that's, that can't be okay. That, that, that's, that does not compute. 
And it makes sense when you have the success. You know, you're, they're not just fortunate to be in the playoffs. The Ravens are not just trying to get to the playoffs, win a playoff game or two. It's Super Bowl now. Lamar Jackson could be a three-time MVP. It's Super Bowl time. That's, that's what it's about. It's getting to the Super Bowl and winning the Super Bowl. And so I just, I think those comments are not criticisms. It's not unfair. And it makes total sense to make those statements because that is where Nick is right, which I know, you know, is very painful to hear from for Ravens fans. But like in that regard, he is right. And we do do that with all these other players, all these other teams. It's where is the playoff success? Where is it? And in years past, you could just say the Chiefs are the Chiefs, man. What are you going to do? That's Michael Jordan but not these last couple of years. These last couple of years, they have absolutely not been this dominant juggernaut force. And so, you know, it's really up to the Ravens to take it to the next level. But those are just my thoughts. I'd absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think about the Baltimore Ravens? How dangerous do you think they are? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I'd absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to. Something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.